mic up. Boil up to the kitchen and I cut it up. Got the toast on deck, so I spread it up. Hey, hey, welcome back to Trending SA. We are live on SABC3. We're also online at trendingessay.tv. And uh, I'd like to do something a little bit different now. So we always look at your Facebook posts and your Twitter posts. But what about the posts on our live stream? You know, we're on YouTube as well. And people post things. So can we have a look at some of the posts? Yes. Yes. Ooh, so this too. is a chat. Ooh, I can't say kukuli. First time watching. This is Ntabi saying, uh, first time watching live. Happy to see the hot squad, especially my crush. Skobosaka says in the Dr. Musa. Yes. And Prince at the bottom, they're excited about Pomudi Adia coming through. Sbulele, uh, this is from where? Oh, Facebook. It says, Happy Women's Month to each and every amazing woman in this world. And hey there, Lindani. Hey! Oh, hey! He's going for a divorce. Don't say that to him. <laughs> Loazi says, Happy Women's Month to all the ladies. May every woman feel oh. free to do anything they want, whenever they want, however they went, and wear whatever they want mm. without feeling insecurities mm. or not feeling safe in the streets of our communities. Happy Women's Month, ladies. Hashtag total shutdown. <laughs> Hashtag tsa on three. Now, we're going to get into the uh, total shutdown, but can I just share quickly that safety everywhere. I put a video up on my social media because <laughs> there were um, public toilets at mm. the total shutdown march. And it dawned on me that if you're at a concert, if you're at a public event, whatever, mm. and they're public toilets, you think about how stinky they are so mm. you don't want to use them, but you're mostly thinking about your safety mm -hmm. going into them. And because it was a women's only march, nice. I didn't have to think about that. And nice. it's quite an amazing shift um, that we always have to have that as a cloud. And they're probably as stinky as well. I know. So well, what men. do you guys do? Well, what? So, like, why can't you just... Hey, Here's the let's pot. Leave, let's leave Get that for now. Okay, sure. I just All right. want to say, can you imagine how awesome a world would be if you could just walk into any toilet that you wanted to do? Yeah. Feel the same and feel safe. You today. Exactly, exactly. Unisex. Go ahead, Well, Lisa. listen, I am the doctor, and the doctor of fun facts is what I am, and today is no different because I'm giving you fun facts about our favorite fruit, the likes of Moao and Dakao. <laughs> no, it's, it's and Moao. Moao and, and, and Dakao. What did and you call it? People from Amanda would really, really know a lot about. I'm talking about the avocado. Now, today, somewhere in the world, it is National Avocado Day, and it is a big deal, and it trended quite big today as well. So I thought I'd show you a few fun facts about this renowned hair and facial cream that many people around the world use. Now, fun fact number one, starting things off, of course, is this one. Did you know that before they started calling it the avo? The Avo, darling. But it was first named the Alligator Pear Tree. Yes. Oh, wow. All three words by an Irishman, Sir Hans Sloan. And uh, he was the first to discover it, allegedly. Aren't they quite by dim, the, though, the uh, Irish? In the Spanish fields in 1696. <laughs> now, fun fact number two, of course, is that it was That's discovered uh, that the avocado seed produces a milky liquid that turns red when exposed to air. And, of course, the people of the yesteryear had used this little bit of information that they now knew to write letters. And there are some books and letters and sort of documentation and literature and that sort of thing available today that still have the seed ink being used. Now, wow. fact three, of course, is avos are loved all over the world. But did you know that in Nelspreet, they take it to the next level. They love the fruit so much that every winter they host the Brondo Avo Festival. Mm. And that is pretty amazing. So now, ladies, because I'm a man of many surprises, it's the end of the month, so I'm going to be blessing you. Look under your seats. What? Look under your seats. <laughs> I said, ah! look under your seat. Look under your seat. Yes. Ah! You get an apple. You get an apple. You get an apple. With mine. I get an apple. Yay! Everybody's getting an apple. Oh, yeah. Guys, this is so amazing. This is worth so much. I could pay my rent with this. Apple. <laughs> it's so hard. It's good. No, I'm on my weapon. Okay, bofa, bofa, bofa. Right, thank you. Right, moving on to the next hashtag, and this one is hashtag land expropriation. This was a major trade today after the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, late last night made an announcement that got the whole country in either panic or quite excited. Mm. And in case you missed this magical moment, here's a snippet. Constitution is a mandate for radical transformation, both of society and the economy. A proper reading of the Constitution on the property clause enables the state to effect expropriation of land with just and equitable compensation and also expropriation without compensation in the public interest. Mm. Sure. 
In English? Interesting. How's that for an avocado? They are going to take, 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 basically, sure. in English. But, uh, of course, there's some terms mm. and conditions. Now, it is no secret that the South African government has been under immense pressure to fast-track land reform. And, of course, in this announcement, that the president uh, discussed his view on expropriation without compensation as a mechanism, of course, to redress the imbalances of the past, reduce economic inequity, and, of course, increase food access for every South African. Now, since the president, Cyril Ramaphosa's land expropriation announcement, the rand has fallen because the rand is weak because the rand listens to whoms and hows. Mm -hmm. Maybe the rand doesn't eat its avocados. I mean, it would be a moral. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> now, as expected, people on the interwebs had a lot to say about this one, especially Mandy Wiener as well as Carol's Carrot. They weren't too optimistic about the new announcement. Let's hear what it says. Mandy Wiener here saying that the optics of Ramaphosa's land expropriation announcement are jarring. Why make an address to the nation as ANC president after 10 p.m.? Call a press conference in the morning. Why make the announcement before the parliamentary process is finalized? Or rather odd. Can't you, you do what you want I think is odd? Mm. That a president of a political party, which is a private organization, mm -hmm. can make announcement at any time. He can do whatever he wants. And Um Sholos used to do it all the time. We're used to it. We're used to drama. Exactly. I, I mean, didn't say that. New cabinets overnight. Anyway, another tweet is one from Carol's Carrot that says, I don't celebrate too quickly anymore. Fees must fall taught me mm -hmm. you never celebrate until you hear the T's and C's yeah. of mm -hmm. any Amazing. victory. First, find out exactly what land expropriation, that's the hashtag, without compensation will mean for black people and if there are indeed great benefits. A very good point. Now, just to clarify a few things for everyone, mm -hmm. ah, land expropriation means this. Now, this is, of course, according to the new ANC policy documents, and uh, I guess we'll get more technical with the... T's and C's on it, but generally just in terms of an overview, what this means is that it does not mean that they're going to take or expropriate people's homes or productive farms. Yay. All right? It is specifically aimed at instances of derelict buildings, unproductive farmlands, and land obtained through illegal means and that sort of thing. Now, of course, uh, that is not the end of the story. It's going to develop and more and more things will come out by it. And with the whole expropriation thing, they'll deal with it on a case-to-case -case blanket and not the general blanket statement put out by the EFF that says grab the land. So don't get too excited until the T's and C's and of course all the parliamentary processes are done and dusted. Bye-bye. Thank you. Keep walking, keep walking. Uh, right, so Skuli, our next big, big trend today mm. uh, kind of was reverberating across the entire country, was it not? Yes, as um, the gorgeous Bobby has said, one of today's biggest trends was hashtag total shutdown as thousands of South African women took to the streets to march against gender-based violence. The march was the brainchild of the total shutdown movement in hopes to galvanize women of this country and bring them together to shed light on the issues of abuse on women and children in this country. And of course, earlier today, our very own Bobby Molloy attended the march and we'll hear from her about what she experienced at the march as part of her total shutdown coverage. Hey, Sissy. Yeah, this is my total shutdown coverage. All right, so it was on social media a lot and many, many prominent people were talking about the total shutdown today. And it was, of course, a march against gender-based violence and the huge spate of femicide that there has been in the country. Now, this march was very, very personal to me. Mm -hmm. um, I lost my best friend back in um, 2011 at the hands of a man um, and she was brutally murdered. And so for me, it is personal, you know, and I was sitting on my sofa this morning, cuddling with my son mm -hmm. and um, and I I thought about her and I thought about how her son is left motherless you know without a mother because somebody thought that they had the right over her body so when I got to the march um, I met some very very like-minded individuals have a look at how it all began for me so these are the first ladies that I met as I got to union buildings <laughs> Because I thought I was late, so we must come meet here. Please tell me your names. No, Mrs. Odele. I'm Tembi. And why are you here today? To show the, to show the support to the women who are abused. Mm. So I was saying down with gender-based violence. Mm. We are tired of men who are abusing women and mm. raping our... And we, we try to beat the system. Why did you give the story? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because no. now we're going to join the march. <laughs> I 
And there were many moments that were unbelievably upsetting. Um, there were people with placards, obviously, that said some um, of the demands, you know, people wanting to absolutely be able to live, just to walk down the street, that what I wear is not an invitation for gender-based violence and sexual harassment. There were women who used their own bodies at, as canvases. Mm, and and mm, you can mm. imagine, if your body is violated, mm. you want to have some way of getting your voice back and your strength back and so they had on their bodies written statements like I am enough um, and you know my body is not your crime scene which was the big call um, and then we were all asked by the MC who was in a, a truck that was following us to get ready for a moment of silence one o'clock ladies there'll be a moment of silence mm. so everyone was asked to sit down on the ground okay and um, it's so powerful when you just look across and it's a sea of black and red dukes black women old women white women just all sorts um and we observed our moment of silence which of course was in honor of those who we have lost at the hands of gender-based violence and then this began And there you can see with fists in the air asking, what have we done to deserve this as women in South Africa? What have we done to deserve this? And that, of course, a big song that was a part of the anti-apartheid fight mm. for freedom. And this march mirroring what happened with those incredible, like our nation's mothers back in 1956, taking to the streets to fight against past laws. And now we're fighting just to be allowed to live. Um, so the big thing as I was walking was, I, you know, interacting with different people and hearing their stories. There were women who had photographs on their T-shirts of those that they had lost uh, to gender-based violence. There were those who were talking about the abuse that they um, had suffered at the hands of intimate partners. Um, and there were also celebrities in the mix. I saw Tandi Swamazwai, I saw Lemu Mashile, I saw Rami Chuen, I saw all sorts of people. Mm. Mm -hmm. They're all lending um, their voices. And, and Lebu Mashila actually said something interesting to me, that without any mainstream marketing, mm. without going out and buying advertising, Total Shutdown was so well attended, so well mobilized by women, for women, because enough is enough. We've had <laughs> enough. So that's my say. And that is my Total Shutdown update. Thank you very much. Angel. Thank you. I think that's pretty phenomenal, Pubby. I mean... Um, it's such a, a clear representation of what was happening. There was a lot of people that, that couldn't necessarily make the march. And uh, in terms of pledging our allegiance to the movement, we were requested to not contribute to the economy yeah. for just for half an hour of the day, uh, switching your phones or switching your television or switching. I didn't use anything from, from one to half past one of a... Total shutdown, you'd be, you'd be surprised how difficult that is in a space where, as women, we have to be economically independent. We have to look after ourselves. We are our own mm. husbands. We are our own fathers. We are, we are independent. And he's still and, so disrespected. Um, and in order to still be independent, we are still harassed on a regular basis. And harassment comes in many ways and forms. Um, here's what some of you on Twitter had to say about the total shutdown. Uh, woman protest essay says, my body, my mm. choice, the total shutdown, uh, I will march. Our bodies are not your crime scenes. I am a woman equal and worthy. No sure. means no. And this one really hit home for me. Um, total shutdown on the ILL news. Why does alcohol excuse his actions but condemns mine? We must stop accepting alcohol as an excuse for domestic abuse and sexual assault. Mm. Hashtag the total shutdown. Uh, this is really powerful stuff. Um, mm. there, is what, there was one more tweet, um, but I think, I think that pretty much sums everything up. I think what's so remarkable is that... The courage. 
there is solidarity. That's mm. it. There is absolute solidarity. You know, I've shed my tears. I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried for the past me, for the current me, for, you know, my sisters, for the grief. I've, I've cried and cried and cried. And I'll tell you, I came away from that march today, having heard all of those stories, having absorbed all of that energy, feeling that, you know, um, the Black Panther suit in mm. Wakanda, mm. that all of the things that you hit me with actually galvanize me to react with an equal but opposite positive and powerful force. Fantastic. Um, and that's how I feel today. Tomorrow I may need to just lie down on my back the entire day. Um, can we talk about this story, which was quite incredible? This woman, after being married for 12 years, was burnt <sighs> by her husband. We hear these stories. Let's hear from her herself. Just waiting to I'm here today marching for myself and those women who are still dying in silence, those who are failing by our justice system. My case has been there since 2014, but I've been suffering since over a decade. It's going to police station, it's attempted murder, and I see my perpetrator every day. He is still my husband. He says, I will get a divorce underneath the soil. I'm still not divorced, even though we are separated since 2014. He said, I will never get a divorce. Mm. Mm. And so I feel that we each have a, a, a way that we feel most uh, connected to the story, yeah. right, of being in total shutdown. And so it is up to each of us in our own corner, in our own way, to make as much of a difference as possible. But it's always amazing to have those moments where we meet each other and see where we yeah. all are uh, and how the work is being done. So, you listen... Um, in Bogoto, all of you who were there today, some of you who wanted to be there, who couldn't be there, some of you who maybe were attacked, who weren't allowed to leave your home because you're in an abusive situation, we did it for you, we feel for you, and we're with you, we're together with you as we uh, break the skirt. <coughs> Thank you very much, Ndate Ramaphosa. You made us wait a very, very long time, but eventually, uh, apparently, he did make it to the union building Good. to receive the memorandum of demand. So we're going to take a very quick break. Um, yeah, this is Training SA on SABC3. Yes,